Hello everyone, thanks for joining me for this month's update. So August was a busy month in terms of release of information about the Great Barrier Reef. It started with the release of the scientific consensus statement on water quality, which summarised all the evidence of what's known about uh, water quality effects on the Great Barrier Reef. It then was followed by the release of the Australian Institute of Marine Science's most recent report on the long-term monitoring program that tracks the long-term trends in condition of the Great Barrier Reef. And then we released the fourth in our series of outlook reports our five yearly summary of what's going on in the Great Barrier Reef across all of the diverse habitats, species, species groups that actually make up this amazing resource and also helping us to understand what's happening in terms of human pressures. Climate change dominates the, in terms of the threats to the Great Barrier Reef um, along with some local scale pressures including water quality, including illegal fishing and coastal development and also the um, out outbreaks of crown of thorn starfish. In many ways that last pressure is one that we've actually got a lot of action happening around at the moment which is actually really important given the threats that reef resilience from a changing climate. What's important to know about the Outlet Report is it includes a summary of all of the scientific evidence between uh, 2019 and up until the end of last year, the end of 2023, so that five year window of information that's brought together to give us a picture of both a diagnosis of what the state of the reef is right now and then a prognosis, what's likely to happen. That prognosis into the future is dominated, as I said, by a changing climate um, and that's actually true for coral reefs around the world, that the pressures of a changing climate are likely to see further deterioration in those systems. Importantly though we have seen in the last five years bounce back of some key habitats like coral reefs and also um, seagrass systems in the Great Barrier Reef. That's largely because of less disturbances over that period of time. I encourage you to go to our website to see some more information about the Outlet Report and explore that in detail. So we're continuing our work with our partners including the tourism industry, the marine park rangers, actually many members of the community to understand what's happening in uh, terms of reef health. Um, temperature conditions across the Great Barrier Reef remain above average or the, uh, the course of August with about um, half a degree above the long term average um, and actually some of the longer term forecasts suggest that we may end up in La Nina conditions by the end of the year. We've conducted a series of in-water surveys and part of the ongoing programs, more than 350 in-water surveys during the month of August. They didn't document um, substantial um, impacts or damage over the, uh, in those surveys. That's largely as to you'd expect at this time of year given that we're not in the main disturbance period of summer. We'll continue to keep an eye on what's going on in the Great Barrier Reef. You can join us by downloading the Eye on the Reef app which both tells you about what's going on in the Great Barrier Reef but also enables you to get involved in some of the programs and also continue to work with our partners who help us keep an eye on what's going on across the Great Barrier Reef. If you want to know more about um, the Great Barrier Reef and the Outlaw Report that I mentioned before, then we'd encourage you to visit our website and get into the detail of that document. Thanks for joining me and I look forward to bringing you another update next month.